Hello everyone, George here, and yes, this is how I record videos for the FNAF series upstairs on my computer. I am now officially going to start development of this game with... Ugh. Here we are, the Vive, as well as... The Oculus Rift. And the next few videos are going to be about me getting it to work with the Vive in particular. From what I've been told, the Oculus will also work with the same tools I'm going to be using. So it should be relatively trivial to move it over. But at this moment, I have no access to those play controls that uh, the Oculus has or has not released yet, I should say. Because of that, what I am going to be doing is instead mainly be developing with the HTC Vive using the Steam VR public uh, plugin that's free on the Unity, Ac uh, Unity Asset Store. And uh, the main reason for the Vive, of course, is because I get to use these controllers. And I think it's going to be freaking awesome to be able to run back and forth trying to click the buttons on the doors as well as um, however I decide to handle the camera interface. So let's go ahead on in and uh, get started on this project. So as a final note, I haven't done this yet. This is all off the cuff like most of this FNAF series. I don't know really what I'm going to be doing until I start doing it. So I might make poor design choices, but as usual, I'll just make a revision video later on. Thanks everyone. Let's get in there. All right, so here we are inside of Unity. I've gone ahead and opened up the Asset Store tab and done a search for Steam and VR. You'll notice there are a couple different plugins up here, but those of course cost money. Valve was nice enough to provide a free plugin for us, and that's what we're going to be using here today. Requires installing the Steam VR runtime via Steam, which I already have installed because I have a, a Vive that I'm working with. Unpolished but functional. Works quite well already. Easy to use. I've heard unpolished but functional quite a few times actually. My students said that as well, but we're gonna see what we can do with it ourselves. So let's go ahead and hit download. Here we are. So this is what we're gonna be adding in. So let's just see what we have here. We've got plugins in Steam VR, plugins. Okay, so the OpenVR API, which is probably gonna be talking for the x86 and the 64-bit versions as well, and all the necessary DLLs. Steam VR, looks like we have the editor, extras, materials to work with and prefabs um, and camera rigging quick start guide okay so let's jump into there. import all right let's close out of the asset store now let's see what's going on here so recommended project settings for steam vr build target equals current standalone windows use recommended sure we'll do that um show unity splash screen sure uh default is default use recommended yes Front and background, true, display resolution dialog. Okay, uh, resizable window, should be, I guess, true. Visible in background, and color space gamma. We recommend using linear, requires reloading scene. All right, close. All right, well, that definitely changed our lighting scenario a bit. All right, so here's our new scene now with the plugins. Things look a little bit different because we changed our our gamma space, I believe. And as I mentioned, I really don't know what I'm doing with this. We're going to learn along together, I suppose. So let's go ahead under Steam VR and check, take a look at the README, which is always a good idea. So this says to just add the Steam VR camera script to your camera object or objects. So prefabs, things that we can use directly, uh, camera rig status in Steam VR. Camera rig, this is a camera setup used by the example scene. It is a simple default camera with the Steam VR component added to it and the expand button clicked. It also includes a full set of track devices, which will display and follow any connected tracking track devices. Controllers, base stations, and cameras. So status has things like uh, leaving the bounds and so forth. Steam VR cl controls global settings for Steam VR most notably the tracking space. So apparently with GUI objects, they recommend using the Steam VR overlay. So our battery, we're going to have to, that little on GUI component, we're probably gonna to have to write to work with this instead. Looks like we can register for certain Steam VR only events. Um, we need to register through Steam VR utilities event.listen. Initialization, calibration, out of range, device connected. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we gotta do. So it is saying that if I go to my, so here's my camera manager and under the camera manager, I have all of my different cameras. This is saying that if I grab my security room camera and I simply add the, the script coming from Steam VR. So Steam VR, let's go to scripts and there's the Steam VR camera. Well, let's see what their prefab provides. So if we go into their Steam VR prefabs and we grab their camera rig and bring it in what do we get so let's just move it someplace up in the sky frame up on it 
So it looks like we get a box. The camera rig itself is composed of a left and a right controller as well as the camera as well. The camera though is, so this is, an, this is a camera object, but then under it are two sub objects. Underneath those sub objects, there is this Steam VR script. Controller, we have two of them, which count as Steam VR tracked objects. Index, no index to find. If we open them up, we get, what is this? I'm guessing this is the model of the Steam VR controller itself, which is what we would end up replacing maybe. All right, so let's just add the Steam VR camera script to our security room camera at the moment. So let's go to scripts and camera to security room. Click on that. We get this breakdown right here. Uh, we have, it looks like we get the Steam VR camera flip script. Then we get the screen, uh, Steam VR script. If we expand this, what happens? So our security room camera, it looks like it's an in editor script. By clicking that, it takes your camera and breaks it down into eye and ears. So let's focus in on that really quick. So we have an eye and ears. The eye gets this a collapsed menu. We have a wireframe, we have a script. Um, we do not have tracked objects, which means we don't have the controllers. But what I'm very interested in seeing is if we just hit the run button, what happens? My Vive just turned on, the screen is visible, and I'm gonna back up and try to see what happens if I put this thing on my head and get into an actual tracked space. Oh, okay. Wow, all right, I that that was incredibly easy. Here, let's see if I can't, can I mirror this? This is probably gonna crash my entire system, but oh, maybe I can't mirror it. Anyway, you can see on the screen through the editor what I'm doing and how I'm looking around, right? Yeah, you can see it. So with one script attached, uh, incredibly easy and simple. Um, so I'm already looking, so wow, uh, the proportions of this space are completely different now that I'm actually here, but it's actually not, wrong really I'm, I'm incredibly surprised the buttons are absolutely freaking huge i'm probably going to want to reduce the size of them but wow okay there's my play space and i keep leaving it so that's the problem there but uh ah wow that, that very quick and easy to add the steam vr script in here and to uh work with it with really no problems whatsoever oh i'm really interested now in getting the rest of the stuff to work let's get those uh let's get the controllers in next how about that all right we'll, we'll do that in the next video bye